Hey guys. Um, so the Pirate 4.6.5 is out. This is going to be the first official version of um, 4.6. Um, the 4.5 is officially retired. I'm spending more time these days on 4. Uh, on Pirate, so 4.6 is gonna see uh, more sub versions kind of going forward, just like you have seen it before. 4.3 has started with 4.6.1, which was the first beta version. And then the 4.6.4 was the release candidate and 4.5 is the official first um, public release of the, um, the Pirate 4.6. Um, from now on, you'll see this subversion listed under the about window. So it's 4.6.5. Um, the, the, the way I work on Pirate, sometimes in, in a year, I have more time uh, spending on it. And sometimes I, have, I don't have as much time. Um, so I'm spending less time on it and whatnot. Um, so the versioning might um, might change or might you know uh, be get versioned differently. Like last year, I released the 4.5 version, and then you didn't really see any other subversion changes until this year. I'm sort of like changing that and going for um, weekly or biweekly or you know a biweekly releases with subversion so it's easier to get you, get you know, keep you guys updated and everything else. Um, you still see the commit number on it if you're using the um, if you're using the git repository. This is basically telling you what exact commit your um, your git repo is sitting on. If you don't, if you're installing it using the installer and everything else, you just see the um, you just see the 4.6.5 version and that's how you know if there's a new version of Pirate out or not. So uh, a couple of small modifications in this release. Uh, the under views, the tool that used to say hide all grid bubbles, now it's a toggle. And as the tooltip says, it works on uh, selected items and um, all grids in a view. So you can select a, com a couple of grid grids in a view, or you can apply it to all of them. And then, and then it allows you to basically you know, show bubbles or hide bubbles. So it's you know it's a little bit improved. And then um, let's see what else was there that I updated. Oh, the copy and paste region, copy and paste crop region um, was broken in Revit uh, because of the API changes, so that's fixed. And then uh, there's not, oh, there's one issue. Well, there are two issues that have been resolved that I'm pretty excited about. One was an issue with uh, the, about, uh, the output window. Uh, giving you an error of set resize border thickness method cannot be found. Um, so that's fixed, which is great. Um, it resolves, you know, that issue. That would that was a critical issue but that would stop people from using Pirate. They, the Pirate wouldn't load um, when launching Revit. Uh, and the other one that I've resolved is the issue number 404 that um, Tommy77 suggested that C Sharp script should also uh, allow for docs, uh, setting doc string, which is a tooltip and a title and everything else in this script. So uh, if you have any C-sharp scripts sitting in a bundle, in a pirate bundle, the IO external command class that you're defining, now you can define a um, series of const um, strings and bools to basically um, specify the uh, standard pirate known um, parameters um, so that, you know, it's basically just metadata parameters. Um, you can set a title, you can set a doc string, the author help URL. These two are available just like they're available in Pirate um, scripts. They're not officially supported, but you can use them. You can specify the minimum supported Revit version and the maximum supported Revit version in your scripts, whether it's the C Sharp or the um, Python scripts. Just like, you know, you set the author, you can just say, you know, maximum Revit supported is to in 2018. And if you launch Revit 2019, that tool will not be loaded in that interface because, you know, the maximum Revit supported is 2018. And then the beta tools for you developers, you can set uh, some of the tools to beta. And then if you go into private configuration, generally loading, oops, wrong click. Generally loading the beta tools is disabled by default. So the, the users uh, won't see your tools until, until you basically delete that beta parameter or set it to false and then the tools will actually get loaded. So that's a great way if you want to have a series of, you know, working on a series of tools for a company and stuff like that, but you don't want everybody to see them right now, you can just set them to beta. And now that includes the C-sharp tools as well. Um, so that's also fixed. That's issue number 404. If you want to take a look at the script here, I'll push these stuff into the documentation soon. Um, the next goals are, after this, the next goals are um, finishing the documentation and um, uh, the localization for, for Pirate.
Um, that will come up in the next version. Let me actually, if I can pull up the um, a table part of it. Sign in, that's odd. Okay, so private development, and then we have all we're all done with these. I should everything is good to go on the old version 6.4.6 beta. There's the four, and then this one is also um, this is also completed, and we are officially publishing 4.6.5. And then um, the next goal is the core documentation and the localization for the 44.6.6. Um, this is pretty much all the updates in in this version, except for a new extension. Um, I've added a new extension to PowerRate, which I'm very excited about. It roots into all my experience in the past year working with engineers and architects uh, in different companies, and I think it's, a, it's going to be a very handy tool set um, for, for all of you, especially, especially, especially engineers and, and architects out there. Um, so when you install the new PowerRate 4.6.5, if you go under extension, extensions, you'll see there's a new private tags extensions available, extension available. You won't see the private template, so don't look for this. It will come in the future. This has a bunch of tools that allows um, helping, helping, helps you with like creating Revit templates and stuff like that. But basically private tags, you can enable that package and private will add, that extension will add a new panel to your private tab. That panel is called the packages and tags. Um, there are two general sets of tools in this. One is the tools that deal with, well, there's a single tool right now, but that's a tool that deal with managing packages. And there's a set of tools, everything else out, uh, you know, after that, that deal with managing tags. And I explained what these are. There's a configuration here that's in progress, depending on how we want to expand the features in these tools. Um, so that the panel configuration will launch the uh, configuration for uh, packages and tags. And I'll explain what each one of them does in separate videos. Like I'll make a video for managing pa my packages and I'll make a video for managing um, the tags. But in this video, I want to explain what these two are. So imagine I have a Revit uh, element. Let's say there's just a wall in here. Um, these tools, packages and tags, help you categorize and group um, content um, in a, in a different way than Revit allows you to do. Um, <clears throat> so let's say I have a, um, let me open this. Let's say I've, I have an element. There are two uh, sort of like methodologies that you can use to group um, this element into a various number of groups. Let's say we have three groups, group one, two, and three. Um, you can either on this element, you can create parameters and set the value of that parameter to true or false. Uh, showing that whether that element belongs to that group or does not belong to that group. Or you can create a single parameter that calls, uh, called groups and then list the names of the groups that that parameter is part of. I'll explain more why this grouping um, comes into play and what, how, is, how it's useful. Uh, but basically, there are two different methods that you can use, we use this. Uh, the private packages, the, you know, the packages system, the man managed packages, follows this, this system. So you can create different project parameters and basically manage those on, on a series of um, elements. Right now, this, the elements that are supported are sheets because each one of these methodologies right now in, uh, in private packages and tags supports a very specific use case. Um, as an example, that is um, sort of like, you know, uh, showcases the, the uh, value of these, these type of to organization tools. Um, the second one is the is the private tags, um, which uh, creates basically uh, one single parameter on all elements, and then lists a bunch of tags inside them and manages these these tags based on the uh, based on the um, whatever number of tags that you have um, provided. So I'll do a complete video on all the features and stuff like that, but just to get you excited and started about this. Um, I can select a private, a, a Revit element, and I can say tag selected, 
uh, I actually have to go and add a parameter and we'll talk about this in the video. Um, it's called, well, you can, you have to have doc tag, meaning document tag somewhere in the, somewhere in the parameter name. And I'm going to select all of this and the type of it needs to be a text. Um, you can select it to be variable group instances and stuff. And basically that's all you need to do. So I have that parameter. It applies to all the elements in this model. Um, so any element that I click, there's a doc tag, um, parameter here and you can organize it differently if you need to, like you can put it on, um, I don't know, let's say put it on data. Let's say we want to put it on data. I'm not enforcing this in any way because every model is different and you want to set these things up differently. The only thing that's being, um, uh, it's not really an, an enforcement, it's uh, config, uh, uh, what is it, convention over configuration. So instead of creating configuration and stuff like that, that allows everybody to specify different parameters and whatnot, um, the convention is that you need to include doc tag in the parameter name and Pyrebit recognizes that as, as, that as the tagging a parameter. So that becomes the tag parameter that basically we talked about in here. So I can select this element and I can say tag and I um, want to say tag one and I can append tag and you can see that it says um, tag one inside that. And because that value exists inside that parameter, now I can filter these uh, components separately. I can schedule them differently and everything, everything that comes with, you know, having that value in there. And I need to, and if I need to tag it with a different value, I can also say tag two and append tag, and it would append that tag number to the, um, to the tags for that element as well. And they are um, systems that helps you manage these tags that are available in your model. Um, there is a system for tag modifiers, which is pretty, um, pretty important and handy. And that's basically what's, what's, what the tagging system does. Watch the video about managing tags. Um, if you want to know everything about it, um, the, uh, the other system is the managing packages. So, a lot of times we um, architects create, let's see, let's, let me create a set of sheets in this model. Let's say 100 to a 120, 10 sheets. Um, let's have these sheets in there without a title block. So I have all these sheets in here. In here. A lot of times we issue packages um, for, for basically our, um, what is it called? The um, drawing set. So there's an SD set, there's a DD set, there's a CD set. And a lot of companies go in and create different project parameters. Um, let's say you create a project parameter that calls um, SD and a lot of firms put a um, date in front of it. Like, I don't know, X, 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 20, X, X, something like that. Um, uh, or you might say, uh, let me actually create this one. It's generally a text parameter and it's applied to sheets. Um, sometimes people put it on phasing um, because it's sort of like, you know, talks about the phases of the project um, and I can create another one or sometimes, you know, you have more content in it, like for example, um, DD 50%. And this is generally how um, architecture and construction industry in North America works. So I don't, I don't really know if, uh, is it the same in the other pl in places in the world? Let me know if you use different systems. But imagine I have these two um, parameters basically set for my sheet. So on any sheet I can go and say, you know, whether this sheet is part of um, that, um, uh, what is it, that package, um, that issuance or not. Um, so private packages are, is managing packages designed to sort of like help you manage these, setting these parameter values. It follows, as I mentioned, this uh, methodology because um, you don't have as many packages uh, as you might have tags. So this system is more appropriate when you have hundreds of tags in a model and this one is more, you know, better and easier because um, when you have a couple of, you know, 10, I don't know, up to 10 packages or something like that. The benefit of this is that you can schedule all these parameters separately from each other. Whereas in this system, there's only one, uh, one parameter basically that could be added to schedule, but its value is a very customized, um, f follows a very customized format. So it's not very human readable um, as much as you want it to be. So this system is more appropriate for for managing packages. So I can go into managing manage packages. Um, I actually, one of the things that we have to do is that if you have all these existing parameters, um, go and add doc package to the parameter name. So I'm gonna say, just like the talk, doc tag, you add doc package, doc package. And then there should be an indexing order. So I'm gonna say doc package one. That means that that's the first package. And then on this second one, I'm gonna go and say doc package 
two. And I'll explain all of this in its you know in the individual video. So basically, of these two packages. So when I say manage packages, I can see all my sheets and I can see these different um, sets of packages and I can see all the revisions that are available in the model too. We'll talk about this in more detail, but basically you can go and say that my sheet was created here and it continues through the different packages and um, it was issued for reference here. And maybe you want to say that my sheet was updated here or um, if you have another sheet, you can say um, the sheet was deleted out of a project here. Um, so it sort of like helps you manage this lifetime of um, sheet changes in in a project, and when you say update, it updates the uh, the um, sets of standard um, values for these parameters that denote whether um, the sheet was which phase which package the the sheet was created in, which package it was modified in, and all the other stuff that we'll we'll talk about in in its own video. So basically, that's the purpose of the packages and tags. Um, um, extension. It's optional. <clears throat> if you want to enable it, you can obviously you can go to extensions and enable it for your um, for your team. And uh, I hope you like it. I'm pretty excited about it. They're very handy tools. And um, this is obviously the first draft of them. Um, let me know. Uh, get it, get tested. You know, get them tested and let me know what you think. And um, if you want more features and stuff like that, we can always adopt it in the future. Um, we'll talk about them each one of these tools in a separate video. So thank you.